Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and let's continue with this series on Python. Now in this video, we will try to sort a list using a sorting technique which is bubble sort. There are different sorting techniques available but bubble sort works well and is easy, easiest one available. So what we'll do is we'll take some values here just to understand how bubble sort works in theory. So let's take some values. We have 5, 3, 8, 6, 7 and 2. Okay. Now we'll sort these values. There are a lot of sorting techniques available, right? Almost in every sorting technique we have one thing in common which is swapping. So basically you swap elements, right? And that's how you will make sure that you your, all the values are sorted. So swapping is one of the important concepts. So make sure that you know the concept of swapping. So what we normally do is we take a third variable here. So example, if you have A and B, and if you want to swap them, you will take a third variable, let's say T, and you will keep the value of A in T, then you will copy the value from B to A, and then you will copy the value from T to B. That's how you swap two values. And we'll be doing that in this video as well. Let's start with the swapping itself. So what we'll do is we'll compare the first two values. In this case, it is five and 3 right now you have to make sure that the smallest one comes first so you will compare if the first value is greater than the second value swap in this case it is greater right so 5 is greater than 3 so what you will do you will swap it so now after swapping the values are 3 5 8 6 7 2 right and now what you will do is now you will iterate now you will go forward so we have to make sure that if the first value is greater than second value then swap otherwise skip right in this case it is smaller right we don't have to swap now now what you will do is you will iterate. At this point, you will compare eight and six, right? Now in this case, eight is greater than six, right? Now you have to swap as usual, right? Now after swapping, you will get six and eight, right? So the final value you will get is three, five, six, eight, seven, two. Okay, that's great. Now you have to do the same thing till the end. So let's make it quick. So now you will compare eight and seven, right? Again, we know eight is greater than seven, so you will swap. The new value you will get is three, five, six, seven, eight, two, right? And the last comparison, we have eight and two. And of course, we know we have to swap. So at the end, you will get three, five, six, seven, two, eight. Now, after this iteration, after doing all these things, we have got one thing, which is eight at the end. So after first iteration, okay? So after doing all these things, you got the biggest value at the end. But then the remaining values are not sorted, right? And now we have to reiterate the same thing. So I have to do the same thing again. And that's how bubble sort works. So it's all about comparing and swapping. Now you will start again. Now you will say again, you will compare the first two values, which is three and five. Three is smaller, don't have to swap. Then you will compare five and six, no need to swap. Then you will compare six and seven, no need to swap. Then you will compare seven and two. Oh, we have to swap here. Then it becomes two and seven, right? So the final values are three, five, six, two, seven, eight. There is one thing which is important. For the second iteration, we are not checking for the eight, right? Because eight is done. So the maximum value you have is at the end right and after second iteration the second last value is the second big element if you can compare the list now seven and eight those are the maximum values so after second iteration you got two big values in ascending order right that means after all the iteration so the number of elements we have here is six right so after fifth iteration you will get all the values sorted right if you repeat the same step that's what bubble sort is and that's why we require two loops. One for the iteration which will make sure that you will get the biggest element at the end and the second loop which is the outer loop will be for do the same thing repeatedly. And that's what you have to do in this code. So let's get started with the code here. So it's quite simple. What you will do is you will take a list, okay? So let me take a number list and let's assign the same values we had. Now, once you got this value, you will simply say, hey, I want to sort these elements. Now, the amazing thing is we do have inbuilt sorting techniques, right? But then we'll not be using that. We'll be implementing ourselves. So let's say I'm saying, hey, sort, sort this nums here. Now, after sorting, you will simply print the values, right? So you will say print, the nums. Will it work? Of course not, right? We have not defined it. So normally you can define this sort method in some other module or you can do that here itself. Let's do it here. So you will say def, you will define the sort function name as sort itself, which takes a list from you. Let's take num itself. And here you will do the actual magic. See, at the end, it's all about swapping, right? So you have to take two loops. So we'll take a loop here. So you will say for, and you will use i. Normally we can use any variable name, but then i makes sense for the outer loop. Let's say for i in. Now, the first question is how many times you have to do this? And the second question is in which way we have to do this? Maybe you can do it in descending order. You can do it ascending order. What we'll do is we'll go in a range. So we'll use a range here, but then from when the range will start. I want to start the length of the nums, right? So you will say length of the nums. The idea is your index number starts with zero, right? So we'll say minus one. 
and then we have to reach till zero. So if we are going from, let's say, if the length is six, we are going from five to zero. And since we are going in negative order, so we'll say minus one. So iteration would be minus one here. That's how we use range, right? So basically we are going from five to one. Now, once you got the outer loop, now it's time to go for the inner loop. So we'll say for j in. Now we have a different range here. So for the first iteration, if you remember, we have to go till n, right? We have to start with zero and we have to reach till five. In the next iteration, we have to go from zero to four. In the next iteration, we have to go from zero to three. After every internal iteration, you will get the maximum value at the end. Then second last value will be the second biggest value. Third last value will be the third biggest value. And that's why the range will go till i, not five. It will go till i. So they depend upon the value of i, which is five, it will be five. If it is four, then it will be four. Because after every iteration we are getting one value fixed and that's it this is your loops now we just have to decide one thing should we swap the values or there's no need to swap the values that's it that's how a bubble sort works so we'll simply check if nums of j is greater than nums of j plus one then we have to swap right that's what we did in theory right so if the first value is greater than second value swap how do we swap it here it's very simple you simply use a temp variable a uh, temp is equal to nums of j and then you will say nums of j is equal to nums of j plus one and you will say nums of j plus one is equal to temp that's it that's what you do we have to make sure that you use two loops one for the external one for the internal right so the internal loop it will do a swapping the outer loop is just to Check the number of elements you have right so if you have to do multiple iteration not one not two it's depend upon the number of elements you have for six values we have to do at least five big iterations uh, so that after every iteration you will get one value at the end fix so you have to take the decision you have to swap or not and once we have done that you will simply save this and let's run this code will it work you can see we got two three five six seven eight oh that's great we got all the values sorted right and that's the beauty of bubble sort it is one of the easiest one available in fact we do have some other sorting techniques as well which you will see in the later videos so i hope you are enjoying this series let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for for the videos. Bye-bye.